All right, today we're going to start talking about molarity as well as dilutions and introduce a concept called solubility rules or how to use them. Okay. All right, so first off, we got to talk about concentrations. Now, concentration of a solution is simply the measure of the amount of a solute in a given amount of solvent. Okay, and there's a couple of different units that we can use. Um, you can do percentages where you have an amount, um, volume ratios, but we're going to stick with one unit called molarity. And molarity is the unit most often used to specify the concentration of a solution. That's why we're going to work on this one first. And it is the number of moles of solute in one liter of solution. Okay, so here we come back to this moles piece again. and now we're going to do this that is in one liter of solution. Uh, the units are moles per liter. It's a capital M that a lot of times you will see kind of italicized and the equation then can be moles of solute over liters of solution. Now a few things still hold true. Remember if we see moles any of the possible curveballs could be having to go between moles to grams, um, having to go from moles to number of atoms or molecules. Okay, so there are lots of ways that we could keep this um, straight as well. Okay, but you got moles of solute. Again, one of the most common ones on the bottom down here is from liters to milliliters. And as a reminder, there are 1,000 milliliters in one liter. Okay. All right, so let's jump right to some samples here. If we have 21 grams of sodium hydroxide is dissolved in enough water to make 500 mils of solution, um, how much are we going to have? Okay, so let's see if we can get this to work. Well, first of all, all right, let's go ahead and list out our known information. Put this up here. All right, they're telling me that I have 21.0 grams of sodium hydroxide. We want to make, our volume is going to be 500 mils what we are trying to figure out, which is the portion that I left off here, is what is the molarity, okay? So we want to know the molarity. All right, so there's a few steps that we're going to have to do. Ultimately, I'm going to put this down here. We remember molarity is equal to moles per liter, okay? So there's our equation is moles per liter, but we got to do two things first. We got to go from grams to moles, and then we got to go from milliliters to liters. All right, so first off, let's start with our 21.0 grams of sodium hydroxide. We want to go two moles, so we're going to have one mole of sodium hydroxide up top. We got to go to the periodic table, take one sodium, one oxygen, and one hydrogen, and we're going to find that that's going to come out to be 40.00 grams of sodium hydroxide. So we take 21, we divide it by 40.00, and we get 0.525 moles. Okay, so we're close. There's our mole value, but we also have to do uh, milliliters to liters. So I'm going to sneak this in over here. We got 500 milliliters. As I mentioned earlier, there are 1,000 milliliters in one liter. So this is going to give us 0 0.500 liters. Okay, so here's our equation. We've got capital M equals moles per liter. So simply we're going to have 0.525 divided by 0 0.500. It's going to give us an answer of 1.05 moles per liter. You also could have done a capital M for molarity. Okay, and that's our answer. And we go back to using um, sig figs here. So we got three sig figs in our data, three sig figs in our answer. Okay, example number two. This time we're going to have 3.7 moles of hydrochloric acid is added to water to make 500 milliliters of solution. What we're trying to solve for here, again, which I've left off of the <laughs> equation, is, again, what is the molarity. Okay, now actually, you don't need the density. So I'm going to go ahead and scribble this off of there. Okay, you don't need the density portion of this. So you've got moles, you've got milliliters. We want to know molarity. So all that we have to do to start with first is make sure we go milliliters to liters. So we've got 500 mils. 1 liter, 1,000 milliliters. Okay, so that's going to end up being 0.500 liters. Molarity is moles per liter. 
So we simply take the 3.7, which only has two significant figures, divided by 0 .500, and we're going to end up with 7.4 molar hydrochloric acid. Okay, and I'm going to put the capital M. You could have also put moles per liter, but there's your unit for that one. Okay? All right, now let's see if I worded this one correctly. Um, you have a 6.0 molar solution of sodium chromate. Okay, so we've got 6.0 molar sodium chromate from a chemical uh, formula perspective. Sodium is a 1 plus, chromate CrO4 2 minus. So my formula here is Na2 CrO4. Okay, so sodium chromate. We wanted to have a solution that only contained 0.149 moles. So this time they want to know how much of the solution. All right, well, so we're really looking at liters of solution that we would need. So we've got capital M is moles per liter, and we've got 6.0 for our molarity. We've got 1.149 for our moles, and we're looking for liters. Okay, now you could manipulate this a couple different ways. I'm going to go ahead and get the liter unit on the other side. Okay, so if I multiply everything by liters, then what I have to do in order to manipulate it again is take 0.149 moles, divide both sides by 6.0. So on my calculator, I take 0.149 moles, divide it by 6.0. Um, two significant figures here, so I'm going to end up with, for my final answer, 0 0.025 liters didn't ask me for in milliliters, so I can leave it that way, or it would be 25 mils, but if I had 0 0.025 liters of solution, it would have exactly 0.149 moles in it. Okay, now dilutions is another scenario where we can do some math where water is added to a standard solution to decrease the molarity to a desired level. Okay, so this is where we take something concentrated and we dilute it down. Okay, so for example, this would be concentrated solution. Okay, I think they give you C, the initials, concentrated. You take a small amount, you measure out a small amount, you put it in what's called a volumetric flask, you add enough water to dilute it. If you've ever used bleach, um, you've done this a th many times, okay, and what we use here is a, re a equation called M1V1 equals M2V2, where M is molarity, V is volume, Okay, and it's kind of like the gas laws, where if we know one pair, we can figure out one of the variables. So, let's see this one. It says, what is the molarity of a solution made by diluting? So here comes some of our known stuff. Okay, our known, we've got 0 .0500 liters. And this, we're going to call this one V1. Okay, M1 is 4.74 molar. Okay, V2 is 250.0 mils, and we want to know M2, or what's the molarity of this reaction here. Now I could have called this one V2 and this one M2, and these M1 and V1, it would not have mattered. Um, the only thing that I have to do before I start is very similar to the gas laws, my volume units have to be the same. So I'm going to go ahead, because it's closest, and take my 250 milliliters and convert it to liters by dividing by 1,000. So I'm going to end up with 0 0.250 liters. So now they're the same. Doesn't matter what they are, but they're the same. I'm going to write my equation, M1V1 equals M2V2. I've got 4.74 times 0 0.0500. Um, I'm looking for M2, and I've got V2. Remember, I converted it to 0.250. So I multiply these two over here, I divide both sides by 0 0.250, my molarity, my new molarity here is going to be 0.948 molar. Okay, which makes sense, if you take a step back, I diluted it, I took a concentrated 0 0.0500 liters of 4.74, I diluted it and added enough water to get to 250 mils, so the concentration went down to 0.948. Okay, all right, we're going to do one more here. This time we want to know the volume of water. We would add, so we've got initial volume of 15.0 mils and initial concentration of 6.77 molar. What we want to know is how much water. So we're looking for V2 
do we need to add in order to get a new concentration of 1.50 molar? So we're starting with 15 mils. It's at 6.77, which is more concentrated. We want to decrease the concentration to 1.50. We've got to figure out how much water we're going to add. So M1V1 equals M2V2. We've got 6.77 times 15.0 is equal to 1.50 times, and we're looking for V2. Okay, now, I'm going to start it with milliliters over here, so this is going to give me an answer in milliliters. I don't have to convert it to liters. Again, you just have to know it's going to come out to be the same. So this time I'd multiply these two, divide both sides by 1.5. So for our V2, we're going to get 67.7 milliliters that we have to dilute this whole thing to, okay, we have to bring it up to 67.7 milliliters in order to dilute this up, or dilute this down to 1.50 molar, okay? All right, now the last piece we're going to do, we're going to talk about precipitation reactions. Now, precipitation reactions, um, if you remember, all ionic compounds are considered strong electrolytes, okay, and we're going to add a piece to this, meaning they dissociate or completely separate in water. Let's see if I wrote some down. Yeah. When two solutions are mixed, there are lots of free ions floating around and they can collide randomly. Now, if an ion ionic compound forms that is insoluble, it's called a precipitation reaction. Now, we've seen some of these before. We abbreviated this as PPT. When you took two clear liquids, you combine them and you got a precipitation reaction. Now, as a reminder, this would be potassium chromate and barium nitrate. So you got a clear solution and a yellow solution. If you combined them, Okay, what's going to happen is you're going to get new possible combinations. It could be a potential double replacement reaction because you're starting with two compounds. Where up here, oops, I want my pen here, where up here you have the barium nitrate, and then down here you have the potassium chromate, CRO4. Okay, so when we combine them, the barium and the chromate and the potassium and the nitrate could combine, and that's exactly what's going to happen. You're going to end up with this insoluble product. It's got the purple bubble, so I know it's got barium in it, and it's got this lovely chromate molecule. So my insoluble precipitate is Br BaCrO4, okay, and you get this yellow precipitate. Okay, which is up here what it looks like in the real world. Two clear solutions, you end up with this precipitate stuff. And we're going to see some of these. Now, if no insoluble compound forms, no reaction has actually happened. It's just a solution with lots of ions floating around. So you got way more cations and way more oh, cations and anions floating around. Spectator ions are what we refer to as free ions, not involved in the chemical reaction. Okay, so back here, our spectators would have been the potassium and the nitrate because they just kept floating around. Those were our spectators. All right, now, again, here is another one where you've got potassium chloride is going to react with the silver nitrate. Okay, they combine and the silver, chlo the silver chloride is going to precipitate out of solution. It's going to be that solid but you still have some potassium and you still have some nitrate. So these guys up here, again, are all of these spectators. Okay, and so you're going to see, um, be able to write some reactions based on what you see here in a little bit. Now, solubility rules are the last piece. Um, you will have a quiz, not a quiz, you will have these on your tests and quizzes. It's a handout that's going to look like this. Let's see if we can find it here. Um, where it lists if things are soluble or insoluble. So you're going to want to take these out. I'll run through the answers. Okay, just to make sure that we understand how to use them. Most people like this side first. Um, all of these are soluble with these exceptions. And then down below you've got the opposite. These are insoluble um, with those exceptions. So the first one is aluminum nitrate. And you will see some patterns. If I come over here, you're going to see that nitrates are always soluble. And they have zero exceptions. So all you have to do up here next to aluminum Okay, so the first one, aluminum nitrate, is always soluble. Now, magnesium chloride, you find it on the um, ion sheet. Most chlorides are soluble, with just a few exceptions, so this one is also going to be soluble. Um, rubidium sulfate also would be a soluble compound. And I'll go over this more in class because I'm running out of time. I just wanted to kind of throw it at you and get you familiar with the chart. Um, silver chloride, most chlorides are, are 
are soluble except for a few exceptions. Silver is one of those, so it's insoluble. Um, ammonium hydroxide, ammonium is one of those that is always soluble, so it is also a soluble compound. Um, lead 2 sulfide is going to be part of the insoluble. Sodium phosphate, sodium is always sol soluble, it's a lot there with nitrate. Iron 3 phosphate.